Now I've mentioned this term a couple of times, homeostasis, and it has come up in another video. It's defined as maintaining a constant internal environment. The one example of homeostasis you need to know about in detail is temperature regulation, how temperature is kept as close to 37 degrees C as possible all the time. It's important that it is because if it goes too high, our enzymes will stop working, all our metabolic reactions will stop working. If we go too low, we could get hypothermia. And again, um, our reactions just go too slow inside our cells. And it doesn't need to change too much. If it gets higher than 40, that's very, very dangerous. If it gets lower than 35, that is also very dangerous. So we've got to keep it as close to 37 as possible all the time. Now, it is monitored by special receptors in the skin and in the brain. And then the central nervous system coordinates the response by activating the necessary effectors around the body that are gonna help either bring the temperature up if we're too low or take it down if it's too high. Really the most important organ here that's gonna cause these responses is the skin. Now the body uses the sweat glands, the hair follicles and the blood vessels in the skin in order to bring about some of these responses. Let's start off with the blood vessels first. So in the skin, there are some blood vessels called arterioles quite near the surface of the skin. And they can either be open or closed. If they're open, then lots of blood flows near the surface of the skin and lots of heat radiates out. If they are closed, then blood stays lower down in the skin and you don't lose as much heat. So by opening and closing these blood vessels, you can either lose heat or retain heat. If you want to open them, it's called vasodilation. And to close them off, it's called vasoconstriction. Sweating is obviously a well-known way of cooling yourself down. However, a lot of people think that sweating works because the water that you sweat out is cold. It's not. It's the same temperature as your body. But what happens is that water on the surface of your skin evaporates using the heat from your body, and that's what cools you down. The skin also has tiny little hairs all over it. You would have had that experience of goosebumps where your hairs all stand up on end and you get all those little, those little sort of um, little bumps on the surface of your skin. Now what's actually happening there is as the hair stands on there, it traps a layer of air. And air is a very good insulator, so that can help to keep you warm. You can also start to shiver if you get too cold and the muscle contractions and the respiration there generates extra heat. So you need to know how you would cool down if you were too hot and how you would warm up if you were too cold. It's an example of homeostasis and it's brought about by what we call negative feedback. If you go too low, it comes back up. If you go too high, it brings back down. That's what negative feedback is. 